All right. Ever get a mosquito bite and you're like, why is this thing so itchy and swollen? Or maybe you've heard inflammation is linked to like serious health stuff. Well, get ready because today we're going deep on inflammation. It's way more interesting than you'd think. You're telling me it's like this hidden world inside us, always active. We've got these excerpts from a scientific paper, by the way. Oh, right. It's originally in Portuguese, but don't <laughs> worry, we've got you covered. And let me tell you, this paper does not disappoint. It's like inflammation is this double agent, right? We need it to survive, but it can also go rogue. Okay, so good cop, bad cop, but inside our bodies, this paper actually calls inflammation a necessary evil. Kind of dramatic, but I see their point. Yeah. So how does the necessary part work? Okay, imagine this. You touch a hot stove, your hand jerks back before you even register the pain. That's your body being like, nope, danger zone. Inflammation, same instinct, just microscopic. So like a biological fire alarm going off when there's trouble? Exactly, say you get a cut, Instantly, injured cells send out these chemical mayday signals. And those signals, they rally a specialized team of cells, your immune system's first responders, basically. Well, hold up. So it's not just about swelling. There's a whole coordinated response happening under the surface. Absolutely. These first responders are white blood cells, neutrophils, for example. They rush in like a hazmat team, cleaning up debris, fighting off bacteria. They even start the repair process. It's incredible. Okay, so that's acute inflammation, right? Short-term, goal-oriented, like putting out a fire. But then there's the chronic kind, the one we hear about causing health problems. Right, so imagine that fire alarm never shuts up. <laughs> Annoying, <laughs> right. That's chronic inflammation, this low-grade but constant state of alert. Your body's stuck with its foot on the gas pedal. Eventually, something's got to give. Which is where the health risks come in. Our source linked chronic inflammation to heart disease, Alzheimer's, even cancer. It's a scary thought, right? Now, it doesn't mean everyone with inflammation will develop those conditions, but the link is definitely there. It's like the smoldering fire in your walls, you know? You might not see flames, but it's causing damage over time. Okay, so we need to understand this better. This source digs into the history of how we even figured this out. Did you know, like, even ancient Egyptians were documenting signs of inflammation? Oh, yeah. Inflammation's been a mystery for ages. The Egyptians noted it, and the Roman Celsus, specifically, he gave us those classic signs. Redness, swelling, heat, pain. They just didn't know the why behind it all. And for a long time, that was about it. But then came some huge breakthroughs, right? Like actually seeing these cells in action. Oh, totally. Late 1800s, this guy Eli Mechnikoff, just using a basic microscope, observes these cells engulfing bacteria. He calls it phagocytosis. He cracked the code. This invisible war going on inside us was suddenly visible. Exactly. And that opened the floodgates for so much more research. Like figuring out there are different players on this microscopic battlefield. Our source mentions neutrophils, macrophages, lymphocytes. It's like a whole army down there. It really is. Yeah. And each cell has a specific job to do. Remember those neutrophils, the first responders? They're like the frontline soldiers, quick to arrive and gobble up invaders. Then you've got macrophages, the cleanup crew. They remove debris to prevent further damage. Okay, and the lymphocytes, what's their role? They're like the intelligence officers coordinating the immune response and, get this, remembering past infections. They're the reason you're less likely to get sick from the same bug twice. They got your back. So it's not just about brute force. There's actual strategy involved. This is way more intricate than most people realize. You're telling me, and we're just scratching the surface here. So we've got, like, an army battling it out inside us. Wild. Mm. But our source also mentions those chemical signals, right? It's not just chaos down there. Not even. Think of it more like a well-oiled machine, actually. Those signals are how everything stays in sync. Okay, I'm listening. So these signals, they control blood vessel dilation, which means more blood flow, more resources to the injury site. Hence the redness, the swelling. Like calling for backup. Yeah. And making room for everyone to work, I guess. Exactly. Plus, these chemicals, they contribute to pain. You know, that whole don't touch signal so you protect the area while it heals. So pain, annoying as it is, is actually doing us a favor. Totally. It's your body's way of saying, hey, I'm on it. Give me a minute. Okay, makes sense. But we talked about how this helpful response, it can turn chronic. What flips the switch? It's often gradual, you know, more of a slow burn than a sudden thing. Remember macrophages, the cleanup crew? Sometimes they go into overdrive, sending those inflammatory signals even when there's no real threat. Wait, so the cleanup crew is causing more damage? Yeah, sometimes it happens that way. And the worst part, chronic inflammation, it can be silent for years. 
No big, obvious signs, just this low-level simmering that damages tissues and organs over time. It's not good. This is where it gets kind of scary, right? Our source called it a silent killer, which, okay, a tad dramatic, but I get the point. Mm -hmm. So this connects to heart disease, Alzheimer's, all that. It does. Heart disease, for example. We used to think it was just cholesterol clogging arteries. Now we know inflammation plays a role, actually helps build those blockages. Like, imagine grease splattering in a pan cholesterol and the heat that makes it burn and stick. That's inflammation. So it's not just what's there, but what makes it worse. What about Alzheimer's? How does inflammation fit in there? Your brain, picture it like a complex network of roads, information highways. And now, imagine constant construction disrupting traffic flow. That's kind of what chronic inflammation does in your brain contributes to plaque buildup, which is a hallmark of Alzheimer's. So like constant road work in the brain, leading to communication breakdowns, memory problems, whoa. Right, and that highlights how important it is to catch chronic inflammation early. We wouldn't wait for our roads to become totally impassable before fixing them. Same with our bodies. That's a good way to put it. So this isn't just abstract science. It's about the choices we make every day. But here's a question. If scientists have been on this for centuries, haven't they figured out how to, like, just stop it completely? Oh, I wish. Inflammation is a fundamental process, remember. Like yeah. trying to eliminate fire altogether. You need it sometimes. But we can learn to manage it keep it from going off the rails. So we can't just like shut inflammation down entirely. Bummer. But you said we can manage it, right? What can we actually do to keep it in check? Well, it's not as easy as popping a pill, unfortunately. Remember that whole garden analogy? Uh oh, here we go again. Just think of it this way. A healthy body, it's like a thriving garden. It needs the right conditions, chronic inflammation. It takes root when we're stressed, not eating well, sleep deprived. Like a neglected garden, weeds take over, everything's out of whack. Okay, so no more coffee, just kale smoothies and meditation retreats. Give me something realistic here. You're not wrong about healthy choices. Diet is huge. Load up on antioxidants, colorful fruits and veggies, right? They help fight those inflammatory free radicals. And omega-3 fatty acids think fatty fish, like salmon. They're like firefighters for your body, calming those inflammatory fires. Got it. Salmon and blueberries, check. What about exercise, part of the garden care routine? Absolutely. Moving your body regularly is like weeding that garden. Gets your blood pumping, helps with stress, even makes your immune cells work better. So we're not talking training for a marathon, more like just finding ways to move every day, right? Right. Find what you enjoy and stick with it. Even a daily walk makes a difference. I can manage that, but stress, though, can't exactly eliminate that from my life. True. But you can manage it. Chronic stress just throws fuel on the fire. Meditation, deep breathing, being in nature, that's like the calming rain for your garden, you know? Okay, so eating well, moving our bodies, finding ways to chill out. It's like we're designing a life that doesn't give inflammation a fighting chance. Exactly. You're creating an environment where your body can thrive, keeping inflammation in its place. This has been mind-blowing, honestly. We started with a swollen ankle, and now it's this whole body-wide system with huge implications. And the coolest part is, we're still learning. The science is always evolving, which means even more ways to understand and manage this powerful force within us. Totally. So to wrap things up for everyone listening, inflammation, it's double-edged sword. Essential for survival, but it can backfire when it becomes chronic. We've explored how it plays a role in serious diseases, and most importantly, what we can do about it through our daily choices. And remember, knowledge is power. The more you understand your body, the better choices you can make to support your health. So true. Well, folks, that was quite the deep dive. A huge thanks to our expert for guiding us through this incredible world inside us. And to you listening, keep those questions coming and keep exploring. We'll see you next time on The Deep Dive.